Scott Brown here. In today's exciting episode, we're going to review this. The 305mm brushless 36 volt Makita Midasaur. Alright, enjoy. So I'm going to start off this review by just saying that I'm a Makita fan. I've got a lot of Makita tools and a lot of them are battery tools. But when it comes to the heavier tools like my table saw and drop saw, I have DeWalt. I like the build and the, the portability of them. And that's something over the years I haven't liked about Makita's table saw and drop saws. So I was particularly interested in trying this out. It's battery powered and it's made by Makita. Now I think there's probably four things that you need to look at when thinking about buying a Midasaur. One of them is portability, another one's cut capacity, the third would be runtime, and then number four would be the overall functionality. How it all works. So let's start with number one. Let's get it out of the way straight away. This is my biggest problem with this Midasaur. This is the size. It is big both in width, depth, height, and especially weight. If you guys have been watching my episodes, you'll know that I, I couldn't get it into the drop saw area that I made for my van. Admittedly, I made that for a 10 inch DeWalt drop saw, the smaller of the um, flagship drop saws, and I made it pretty tight for that. So that's probably not a good benchmark, but just the overall portability of this saw is, is hard work. It's pretty much the first impression for uh, most people who have seen this drop saw. This thing's a monster, eh? It really is. <laughs> What do you think of the saw there, Cameron? I know you've never used it, but what's your first impressions when you look at it? It looks beasty, man. Now this might just be me, but when I think of cordless tools, I think of portability. All my cordless tools are, you know, circular saws, drills, multi-tools, things like that. And the best thing about them is being able to not worry about a cord. You know, even my reciprocating saw, if I want to cut a joist or something, I don't have to run a lead in order to just make that one cut. Unfortunately, this doesn't come into that category because it's so damn heavy. It's 30.7 kilograms, which is it's heavier than the corded version of itself. It's cordless, but it doesn't have cordless portability. The 10 inch Makita is 26.6 kilograms. The DeWalt uh, 10 inch, my one, is 23 kilograms. And the 12 inch is 25.4. And this is 30.7 kilograms. So portability, not so good. Now to be fair to Makita, they have had a 10 inch version of this out for quite a while which I've seen and it looks a lot smaller and like I just said it is a lot lighter so that might be a good option and I guess the reason that they made this one here, the 12 inch is because there's demand for it. Most people want to buy a 12 inch drop saw for that extra cut capacity which is point number two. According to Makita, this has an increased cut capacity for up to 203 millimeters, eight inch crown molding, vertically nested, which is cut the way that you see it on the wall, and 171 millimeter baseboard or skirting, depending where you live, um, vertical as well, and 382 millimeter cross cuts at 90 degrees. That's, that's like that, that's quite a bit. So that is a very large cut capacity if that's the kind of thing that you're into. And number three is, uh, is runtime. I haven't done a runtime test myself. According to them, again, up to 175 cuts in two by 12 pine. You can do that many cuts with two five amp batteries. Point number four, functionality. We've been using this for a few weeks now and, and there's a couple of things that uh, remind me why I didn't get a Makita saw and got a DeWalt saw instead. And to sum it up, it's just a general overcomplication. If there was one word that I would use uh, for improvement of the saw, it would be simplify. Just, just make it a bit more simple. Things like this. See the fence here, if you want to do a beveled cut, you know, if you want to slant the saw that way to do an angled cut, you can't loosen this and slide it out. Now I've seen that on other Makita saws and I've always wondered why they do it like that. You have to literally take the fence off and put it in your tool belt or something in order to do a beveled cut. And when I first saw this, I got excited because I thought this was a bevel adjuster. And I thought, great, you can adjust the, the bevel from the front without having to reach around to the back. Turns out that's not what it's for. It's actually just tightening the bevel once you've set the position. You still have to reach over here, put it that way a little bit, press a button around here, and then you can go into position. 
Now dust extraction is becoming more and more important with Mitosaurs and tools in general. And I've been using my DeWalt 10 inch with my Festool vacuum cleaner and it's, it's been great. I use my Festool vacuum cleaner for this saw as well and it's been good but unfortunately I couldn't really do a fair test with the vacuum because I don't have the Makita Bluetooth version. This one actually comes with this chip here that goes into the saw and lets you turn the vacuum on remotely. Then you're not going to forget to turn the vacuum on like Pato and I did when we were using the Festool one. And the saw also has uh, two extraction points. That's the one that goes down there by the by the base plate. And then this one connects here by the gar the blade. And that goes to your vacuum. So it extracts from both points. I really like that, but we found that when we forgot to turn the vacuum on, dust would clog up inside here because if you look closely, it's like a hard right angle from there into the pipe. So it didn't take long for that to fill up. Let's try it with the dust bag rather than the vacuum. I haven't tried this yet. Oh, I think you take this out. Surely not. So it looks like by putting the dust bag on, you lose the you lose the extra outlet down the bottom here. Yeah, it's not bad for one bit of dust there. Bit of dust there. There's good and bad things about this saw being so heavy, and that is its capabilities. The base plate on it lets you cut up to 60 degrees either side and it has a real smooth indented locking system like most mitosaurs. No matter where you tighten it on the base plate, it locks in nicely. Well, if you want to stick with Makita because you want all the same batteries and you want maximum cut capacity, yeah, maybe you should buy this one. But if you want to stick with Makita and you want portability and a pretty good cut capacity, I would get the 12-inch version of this drop saw because that's like a full four kilos lighter and the cut capacity is reduced, but you can still cut a lot of stuff. I've been getting by with a 10 inch drop saw for like two and a half years without complaint. Oh yeah, and I, I, I forgot to mention this. This is a clamp thing for holding the timber. I never use this. I've heard of people having problems with the lasers on these particular Makita saws. It was out when we got it. Today when I was mucking around with it, I saw that it has this little windy thing here and that changes the laser line. And I managed to wind it into a correct position and I got pretty consistent cuts. So what do you guys look for in a miter saw? Portability, cut capacity, power? Let me know in the comments below. I got a lot of people mentioning the uh, DeWalt equivalent of this drop saw for a battery miter saw and uh, the guy from DeWalt just turned up. So I didn't know if you needed dust extraction so I grabbed that as well. There we go. Kind of similar. Now nah, that one's actually quite a bit bigger. Well I appreciate uh, these companies letting us try these tools out. I get to try them out, you guys get to See what they like before you, you know, think about buying them. See you in the next sunny episode.